All right, hey guys, welcome back to another one by me, Spectral Blood. Um, well, as I've been playing this ongoing series called It Moves, I've come to find out that it's horrifying, incredibly interesting. Um, I love it, and my screams of terror don't seem to cease. Um, I really hope you guys are enjoying it too. Um, we are on night six, I do believe. It's called the Abyss, and somehow he's managing to hold his breath deep underwater when the pressure would, uh, when the pressure from being that deep underwater would clearly make him, uh, would clearly crush his body without the right kind of gear, especially if he was just dropped in there quickly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and save it. Uh, granted, once again, as per usual, I have no fucking clue where I'm going or what I'm doing. But apparently going left and down is the correct way to go. So, let's continue. And since I'm underwater, I cannot sprint. So, I have no ease for my anxiety here. I have no kind of ease. What the dick? There's weird ass machines everywhere I go in this game, and it's very discomforting. But I guess my best bet is to go this way? Yeah, there we go. What, what what's this? Some kind of freaking submarine port? Okay, now I can now I can sprint and I saw corpses up there. So even more discomforting. Drain water and remove diving gear. Yes, please. Wait, so I do have diving gear? Hey, now, don't do that to me so soon. You can't just hammer me on a constant basis like this. It don't work that way, man. Don't do this to me. That ain't cool. But at least I can... Ah, shitty poopa. Was that dad? That I think that was dad. What was he doing over here, though? It's a logbook. Uh, Theodore Fielding, uh, Captain Theodore Fielding, September 2nd, 2007. One of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic when you consider the fact that I'm now working on a uh, mining station thousands of feet underwater in the Mariana Trench. Or Mariana Trench, something like that. I have always wondered why I was so afraid and reached a simple conclusion. The true fear presented here is actually going down beneath the surface to the depths. It's a combination of all our com uh, all our most common fears. I fear the dark. When you're at the bottom of a body of water, you can't see anything. It's pitch black. Have you ever tried to swim as far down in a lake as you can? It gets really dark and cold really fast, about 10 feet down. But even that's nothing compared to the deepest point of the entire crust of the earth located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, uh, the Mariana Trench, which is 38,000 plus feet. If you, put a, if you put Mount Everest at the top of a trench, the top of the mountain would still be over a mile below the surface of the ocean. Everything below you is, com uh, is complete darkness, and this definitely plays into our collective fear of the dark. Oh, uh, real quick, regarding Mount Everest, fun fact for you, um, is that Mount Everest is not actually the tallest mountain. The tallest recorded mountain is called, uh, Olymp uh, Olympus Mons, or Mount Olympus, rather. Uh, it is actually located on Mars and is approximate, and is a, and is approximately three times the height of Mount Everest. So, fun fact for you there. What happened? Okay, there we go. Uh, second, uh, s the second fear, the fear of suffocating. Have you ever gotten to the point where you swam down too far in the swimming pool and you seriously considered the fact that you might not make it back to the top before you ran out of breath? Been there, done that. If you've ever been roughhousing as a kid with blankets and pillows, you accidentally get pinned down inside of a sleeping bag or something, and you get to that point where laughter temporarily turns to screaming. You know what a you know what a scary concept not being able to breathe is. Even if you have scuba gear, uh, even if you have scuba gear uh, with you down in the deep dark abyss, there's a chance a valve could pop out or you could run out of oxygen. You can't see, and you can't really get a deep breath. Could it get worse? 
Yes. Uh, three. Uh, <coughs> fear of the unknown. There's over there are ugh, there are over one million species of creatures in the ocean, and scientists estimate that there is an additional nine million species yet to be discovered. Um, that means we only uh, that means we only even know what eleven percent of the creatures in the ocean are. Most of the beings in the ocean are things of mankind. Are things mankind has never seen, uh, never seen or heard of. Who knows what could be down there? Think about a time when you were walking in a dimly lit basement trying to find something. All of a sudden, something brushes up against the back of your neck. They become airborne, similar uh, to a frightened cat, and instantly turn around and shine the flashlight to see what it was. It's never anything actually scary. But deep in the water, it's always something scary. It's dark. You can barely breathe and something just touched you and you have no idea where the, uh, where they just went. But there is more to fear, I'm afraid. Fear of flying insects. Imagine that you are walking along all of the beetles and scorpions crawling along the ground. The huge black hairy spiders that are hidden from view in the cracks and the slimy worms and snakes that are burrowed beneath the ground simultaneously starting uh, started flying anywhere they wanted. Um, this is what the bottom, uh, this is what the bottom of the sea without water would be like. For the strange creatures underwater, there is no up or down. Even the manliest men, even though they appear to be calm, quickly tense up and become filled with a secret fear that the bug might land on their eyeball or fly into their mouth. That's why men try so hard to kill them. Uh, not necessarily because, um, I actually used to have pet spiders, um, so the fact about spiders is false, but bugs in general, I actually used to have, uh, a, I actually used to keep a black widow as a pet. Um, I would even have a little fly trap, or, yeah, I would even have a little fly trap and I would, uh, pick the flies off and feed it, and feed it to her, uh, feed it to her. I'm a weird motherfucker, I know. Um, anyway, where were we? Uh, unfortunately, in the deep water, you can't see any of the undiscovered freakish flying creatures that brush past your body as you grasp at your suffocating throat. Fear number five, fear of being caught. Imagine that you're running from a bear or a, ver uh, or a dark, disturbing creature that's trying to kill you because he was summoned by Satan. Um... You'll be eaten if you're caught, and it doesn't help that bears can run faster sideways than the fastest human can run forward. When you're at the bottom of the sea, everything that is around you was built to move in water. If something truly frightening like a shark or a giant squid caught sight of you, um, they misspelled sight uh, for this term. You, uh, you could turn the other way and flail about all you want, but the monster will catch up with you in a split second. You can't get away from anything. Even if you had the, uh, even if you had the, uh, wherewithal or something like that to see and breathe, you couldn't run from danger. You would sim- it, it would simply find you and devour you. There are lots of places that I wouldn't want to be, such as trapped in a burning house, or alone in a vacuum of, or alone in the vacuum of space. But in the, uh, but in the burning house, at least I can see, and in space, at least there, there aren't any creatures that could get me. But you still can't breathe in either place because in the burning house, there's plenty of smoke and carbon monoxide, and in space, there is no air. So either way, you can't fucking breathe. There are no other places in the universe that combine as many common fears as seven miles below the surface of the Pacific Ocean. It is, uh, it is because of the combination of all of these fears that I am so horrified by the deep water. Okay, hang on. I'm going to open this back up real quick. First of all, why does a child in a dream, or nightmare rather, why does a child even know about this place at all? Uh, the, uh, the Mariana Trench. Why does a child know anything about this? Is my question. Anyway, let's skip out of this crap here. And onward. Onward towards our death. 
that's creepy as fuck for a fish. What? I thought I... What? I thought I drained the water. Why am I gently floating downward? Am I drowning? What is happening here? I can't move, guys. It's doing this itself. I'm sorry. I'm out of this. See? My hands are up. I can't move. Oh. Well then, hello. The first few uh, uh, nights, three and four, were utterly horrifying to me, but five and six really weren't that bad. What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I had woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it had finally gotten me, that I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toying with me. After all, it had been doing just that for countless nights. Uh, six so far to be exact. Not countless. Uh, I could still count them on my hands. And now, with me under it, pinned against my mattress, with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off savoring its victory until the last possible moment like a wild animal savoring its prey i tried to breathe as shallowly as possible and mustering every ounce of courage i could i reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off me what i found other, uh, under the covers almost stopped my heart i didn't see it but as my hand moved the blanket it brushed against something something smooth and cold something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror as I was sure it must now have known that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and, and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched, laying across my chest with the hand resting on my left shoulder as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this, night, uh, of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Once again, fear once again swelled in my stomach and in my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of the stra strangled oily hair, or straggled oily hair, sorry. I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wonder to this day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. Don't kill me. Please, for the love of Satan, don't kill me. I'm just glad that... Hostia. Chapter 7. Hostia. All right, guys. I'm going to end this episode here. I know the majority of that was book reading, and I apologize for that. But a lot of good points were made. Those are all very common fears and also common fears that I personally have as well. Um, but again, I, uh, again, just like in all the others, I really hope you're enjoying this. Um, if you did, hit that like and subscribe button, please. Uh, I love you guys and thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I will see you guys next time.